We're going all the way, my dear. All the way. Come with us as we take you inside the boundary ropes with exclusive up-close footage of the stars, sights and sounds of the 2012 Caribbean T20 tournament in Antigua and Barbados. I'll come here with the intention to win. Domination. And relax. Go <laughs> <laughs> and never mind. You always try to get me out in the morning, eh? All right, mate. Good <laughs> man. Good game tonight, yeah? Antigua boasts miles of lush greenery, exotic beaches, and picturesque harbours that attract tourists from all over the world. The Leeward Islands cricket history runs deep, and the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium is host to the first six days of the 2012 Caribbean T20 Tournament. The Big Four, Barbados, Jamaica, Guyana, and defending champions Trinidad and Tobago are expected to dominate but it's the Windward Islands, led by West Indies captain Darren Sammy, who make an instant impact. Sammy settling under it, takes the catch. And that's the celebration they can now begin for the Windward Islands. They've started with a victory. What we're seeing this year in the third edition is that a lot of the other teams are better, you know. Trinidad and Tobago are still, as defending champions, a very talented team, but we're seeing Barbados, the Windward Islands, Jamaica, and all those teams are, are hungry. And what that means is that we'll get more competitive matches and, you know, fiercer competition. Kyron Pollard, who contributed a trademark six before becoming Shane Shillingford's second victim, is struggling to overcome a hamstring strain an injury that prevented him from playing for South Adelaide in the Big Bash League. Pollard and TNT get the chance to bounce back against the Leeward Islands two days later. And this time, the tournament's marquee player does not disappoint. Well, that's it. Five sixes in the over. This is a real bluttering from Pollard and Trinidad and Tobago. It's still bugging me a bit, um, you know, to be honest with you, it's still bugging me, but, you know, i got to go out there and do it for Trinidad Tobago and do it for Trinidad Tobago team, so I can easily say, you know, I'm injured and stay home and, you know, relax, but I would feel good within my heart to know, you know, the guys are fighting and I can just try and come and give some sort of input, be it in, on the field, off the field, and obviously I'm on the field at the moment, so hopefully it goes well and hold up for the tournament and we'll see what happens after that. Pollard's name is synonymous with the new generation of cricketers who have made their living from T20. Still only 24 years old, the all-rounder has a propensity for destroying bowlers with his heavy hitting. We first saw him when um, the stand for 2020 was induced um, here in Antigua and Barbuda. And we, we, I was actually chairman of select, selection at the time and, and picked him to be part of that whole setup. What we're seeing from him is what we know Karen Pollard to be. And he's becoming a little bit more sensible in his range of stroke play. Great to watch. If I had one advice for him, is to, to start believing himself a, a little bit more. I think there's an abundance of talent there. For Trinidad and Tobago to restore their confidence and defend their title, they must defeat Guyana, the 2010 champions. This game itself, um, it creates um, so much excitement in, in, in such a way that uh, you never quite know what's going to happen. Having restricted Guyana to 101, TNT are struggling in the 13th over at 70 for three. Dwayne Bravo gone for 18. Pollard will need to make a big impact. That's high, and it's gone for six. And that's game seven match to Trinidad and Tobago. And smiles from Kyron Pollard. The big man does what he does best. We have beaten Guyana in 2020 cricket in the Caribbean since in, in the inception of 2020 cricket. So, you know, the margin of victory we won, you know, we won pretty convincingly. So hopefully we can secure a spot in the semi-finals. I've always been uh, a great fan of the Trinidad and Tobago team. They are very much stood together, some uh, all-around team. Jamaica and um, Trinidad and Tobago. And if it gets to that particular scenario, uh, I think they are good enough uh, to, to, to send that message. Uh, what Western cricket is all about. Jamaica, four-day and Super 50 champions, have yet to break through at the 2020 level. Despite a weakened batting lineup, with star hitter Chris Gale playing in the Big Bash, bowlers Krishma Santoki and Odeon Brown have been in devastating form. 
Barbados too are expected to contend for the title with a strong pace attack in Tino Best and Fidel Edwards. Anderson Springer's side is also blessed with excellent team chemistry, but on this night, opening batsman Dwayne Smith takes centre stage in the 62-run victory. This is turned out to be a hurricane of an innings for Dwayne Smith. As long as I stay out there, the runs are going to come with the, the free scoring ability that I have. So it's just for me to keep batting and keep batting um, as much overs as I can. It's not only his 86, it's the man in which he goes about his training, the man in which he goes about his dressing room and his professionalism and his fitness has carried him thus far. And they hope he can start the big things to come from him as well. It's the first loss for Jamaica. And as the team struggles to find their unity, another defeat would spell disaster for the talented side. Coming up on Caribbean T20 All Access, the tournament moves to Kensington Oval in Barbados, where the Bajans will continue to celebrate. The lads of Sussex try to make an impact, while Wendy's coach Otis Gibson considers his selection conundrum. It makes the election a bit of a headache, but it's a good headache to have.